Hello everyone and welcome to Pyanodon's Mods. This is Otaku Showboat and today we are going to be discussing phosphate processing yet again. If you have been enjoying these updated tutorials thus far, please be sure to do all of the engagement and social stuff below the video. You can follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash otakushowboat. You can support Pyanodon's mods development at patreon.com slash pyanodon. And you can, of course, support me at patreon.com slash otakushowboat. So, this is going to be a very short one today, but I just wanted to make sure to discuss some of the finer details now uh, in regards to the a Pi Alien Life expansion and how that's impacted uh, the phosphate processing chain. Uh, it's only really affected it in one very specific way and we'll discuss that as we go along. So, phosphates. You are going to need to do phosphate processing at green science as you are working your way into getting PCB2s very specifically uh, and even more specifically etching solution. You may also be using it a little bit earlier than that using the phosphoric acid a little bit sooner if you're doing the alu aluminium pulp one uh, production that you need for other components of the circuit two production chain. So you are going to be using phosphoric acid twice, uh, as well as phosphine gas once in the production of circuit twos, ultimately. But you also need the PCB twos to make neuroprocessors now uh, with Pi Alien Life, uh, and that is, of course, going to be timed Potentially a little bit earlier, I would suggest you make neuroprocessors before you make circuit twos because they use primarily circuit one componentry for the exception of needing PCB twos. Uh, and of course the PCB twos need etching solution, which needs phosphoric acid, uh, which will be one of your earlier requirements for phosphoric acid, besides if you've decided to go up through aluminium pulp 2 already for your source of aluminium because you know by this point maybe hopefully you know that you need aluminium pulp 1 uh, for making a component in the circuit 2 chain at two components now i think because you know mosfets have been added as well as a separate component and i'm pretty sure i remember saying that they also require uh, the aluminium pulp one somewhere in there. Uh, aluminium pulp one. I want to know by ingredient on the pulp one. Yes, it is used in MOSFETs as well as in the capacitor twos or electrolytic capacitors as they are now called. Um, and of course, pulp one needs phosphoric acid. That's that's my that's my point is that pulp one needs the phosphoric acid. This isn't actually showing me there. Pulp pulp one needs the phosphoric acid. So this process will begin with the mining of the phosphate rocks. You can obtain phosphate rocks through these little dinosaurs. That's what that's what I think of them as. They are uh, they are rocks that are dinosaurs, basically, down over here. These, these guys. The ancient remains. The, the ancient remains. The bones. The bones! Stacks of bones. That's, that's where you're going to get your, uh, your phosphate is from these doohickeys here. Uh, there is a big ancient remains variety. Uh, a big phosphate rock. It looks a little bit like this. It has the big, uh horned skull on it. That's how you can sort of tell is that it has the skull. Uh, that one is considered a mega mine uh, and comes a little bit later. You won't really be able to tap into this for a little bit longer, but so initially 
your source is going to come from these guys right in here these smaller ancient remains patches which usually come in groups of a few um they do however take syngas in order to mine them so bear that in mind you need to have a source of syngas to mine the ancient remains now if you're playing Pi block unfortunately your ancient remains sites are not going to be consistent supplies of enough phosphoric uh, phosphate rocks for you so you'll have to figure out uh, an atomizer way of getting your phosphate rocks uh, there are many many atomizer methods of getting into phosphate rocks uh, including bones and meat and fish and chitin and tree seeds when you need it you'll only have access to the meat and tree seed recipes of which the tree seed recipe is probably going to be the better one for you if you are playing pie block if you're not paying pie block it doesn't matter don't you, you, you won't really need to consider doing any of these atomizer recipes uh, that are part of pie alien life by the way uh, you, you won't need to consider that. There's also this recipe that exists normally that is phosphoric acid out of bone meal and collagen and sulfuric acid. This uh, isn't as good as the later phases in particular. Well, it's not as good as any of the atomizer recipes. Like, let's get that out of the way. This phosphoric acid from bone meal and collagen is simply greater in its uh power usage ultimately and building counts i believe uh and like space requirements and such it's just more resources are required to do this than it is to do uh this tree seeds on uh and and meat by the way it's easy it's actually easier to go through the meat method which is one of the worst methods that are that's listed here uh, maybe fish has a run for its money depending on how you get it, or even the bones. But uh, chitin is the ultimate winner here once you are able to get into this recipe. Uh, so just bear bear that in mind. If you are interested in getting your phosphate rocks from nothingness, pure nothingness, uh, this chitin is very useful because you can get chitin from uh, Vrauk. You can get chitin from Vrauk, and you can get Vrauk from nothing really easily, uh, especially in that later phases of the game once you get access to this recipe. Uh, so that's my note on the uh, obtaining of phosphate rock. Also note that you need phosphate rocks as rocks for several things, including phosphate glass. Uh, that is timed towards circuit threes. Uh, generally speaking, it's timed more towards circuit threes. I think it's gotten a little bit of a bump up you know, on its required needs uh you need a ton of myoglobin but that's the powdered phosphate rocks not the actual rocks themselves so do bear that in mind uh let's see here you need the phosphate rocks for this molten stainless steel recipe uh so that's the standard stainless steel it's going to need actual phosphate rocks uh, and then the upgraded version is also going to use phosphate rocks as rocks. Uh, so stainless steel. Now also, phosphorus pentasulfide, which is a substance that gets used in high-grade ore processing uh, of a few high-grade ores. Uh, this is going to require phosphate rocks as rocks as well. Uh, and then as for the powdered phosphate rocks, uh, as we've been able to see... Uh, the few uses there. It is used to do the myoglobin. Uh, you need a lot of myoglobin uh, going into the late game, uh, so you are going to need a lot of powdered phosphate rock for that, and uh, you will need a lot of metallic glass going into the later phases of the game as well, so that is another powdered phosphate rock uh, requirement there. As for the phosphorus acid, uh, the phosphorus acid is only ever used in Z3 reagent or Z3 reagent, depending on your proclivities, uh, which is part of the high-grade lead and silver uh, processing chain. 
that's it. It's only used for high-grade lead and silver processing. You want to do that. You absolutely want to do that. So make sure that you have uh, the phosphorus acid uh, capability, uh, like have it available somehow uh, for this stuff, for the uh, lead processing chain. Just ma make sure you do that. Uh, from here, uh, I guess it, it goes into the phosphine. Uh, the phosphine, what is the phosphine used for? It is basically only used for two things in and of itself, uh, besides making phosphoric acid. Uh, it is used for the light and doped silicon, which is an ingredient that'll get used in circuit twos uh, and beyond. Uh, and it is required for quantum dots, which is space science, which is... Uh, an ingredient directly used in space science and Mark IV buildings, a few Mark IV buildings. Um, so very, 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 very late in the game, you get this extra thing that uses phosphine gas, like at the very, very end of the game, this extra little requirement for phosphine. Uh, so chances are you're not going to be consuming all the phosphine gas that you're producing out of this, which means you're going to have to be converting excess phosphine into additional phosphoric acid. You have two options for that. I have displayed one here, but the other option is to convert 40 or to convert 50 phosphine gas into 40 phosphoric acid in a high pressure furnace. This is generally speaking going to be your default if you do not have easy access to uh, saline water. If you can get the saline water, which I highly recommend you get the saline water you get access to this, this hydrogen chloride recipe. It's technically a hydrogen chloride recipe, but uh, it's not particularly useful for the hydrogen chloride itself because you are spending these phosphate rocks to get into it uh, and a bunch of other components, uh, outside inputs to get to it in the first place. It's just, no, you're doing it to convert phosphine into phosphoric acid at a one to three ratio. You take 5 phosphine gas to make 15 phosphoric acid. Uh, that is a huge bump in your phosphoric acid out. It is always going to be worth it to do this recipe. Also, fun side note, this now uses saline water. Originally, it, it took regular water, but that got changed really quick when I pointed out how easy it was uh, to do this recipe uh, with just regular water. Uh, yeah, that, that that got changed real quick once I started to exploit it, uh, as is the case with many of the things uh, that I have done uh, in this game. Many, 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 many things have gotten nerfed as I purposefully exploited them to uh, to my advantage. Um, yeah, on on my streams, by the way, I've 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 done these things. I've found and exploited lots of things that have gotten uh, <clears throat> changed, that have gotten changed and uh, somewhat fixed. Uh, over time, so blame blame me for a, a, a few things, quite a f quite a few major changes uh, and fixes uh, to uh, some exploitative uh, behaviors. But yeah, that is that is that that is why I have chosen this for our display here. So the chain itself, uh, with all of that, as I've discussed, how you use each part of the chain, uh, you have to jaw crush your phosphate rocks into a powder a powdered phosphate rock. You will end up with an equal amount of stone as powdered phosphate rock that you will have to deal with. We are, of course, looking at 15 per second in here. You're, you're probably going to want closer to 30 to 45, uh, at least, maybe even more than that of uh, processing, which, as you'll see, is just really expensive on term in terms of the outside inputs here. This is a very simple step process, but the complexity here comes from all of the outside inputs and how you obtain the outside inputs. Uh, so from the powdered, you will, in a high-pressure furnace, have to combine ash, pure sand, the powdered phosphate rock, and syngas. Note that this is way more ash than the amount of syngas is required in for here. So while, yes, you can get ash out of producing syngas from coal gas from tar, it will not be enough ash uh, to make sure that this keeps going. So you will need some sort of extra production of something to get into ash. Uh, however, with Pi Alien Life, it's pretty easy to get into ash uh, through uh, biomass uh, at this point, as long as you have access to 
gas refinery buildings. Yes, I, I think that's the name, or yes, yeah, I, gas refinery. I, I always have to pay attention because there's the gas processing unit, which is a very separate building from the gas refinery, which is part of uh, Pi Petroleum Handling. Uh, and has a interesting set of ingredients to make that building. Uh, I think it's blocked by a key item that you may not have at the point in the game where you might want to consider first using it. But anyway, uh, ash is fairly easy to get, as is pure sand. But do note that this uses a lot of pure sand, and you need to make sure that these are these are small buildings. So you need to make sure that you have the proper logistics set up to be able to actually feed in two per building two units per second of pure sand in each building especially when you consider that you have even less space available to you thanks to the fact that this needs a fluid in and a fluid out on each of these buildings and you need three solids in three solids in it's uh yeah, it's a it's a bit much on the logistics uh, uh, for this, so this is very heavy on the complexity of the logistics just to even feed the machines at the proper rates, as well as 30 pure sand is a lot of infrastructure. Uh, we're talking for every two pure sand per second, it's one washer for the pure sand, one washer for the sand, and then three-ish soil extractors to feed that sand. Uh, I say three-ish because it's just over two. I I hate that it's just over two. I have, this is my one of my biggest complaints. I wish it was exactly two, but no, it's just over two to get that full uh, production there. So unless you're willing to try to build it at ratio, I always tend to overproduce uh, on the soil by having three into one into one for the soil extractors into washer making sand, into washer making pure sand. Uh, so you can think of every two per second being five buildings, plus the sinkhole to get rid of the tailings, plus the uh, source of water that you use to actually pr give water for all five of those buildings. Um, so yeah, this adds up. This adds up, and you multiply that by 15. Five times 15, and that's a lot. Uh, or yeah, that's a that's a lot of buildings. <laughs> that that's that's a lot of buildings that you have to add uh, for this setup just for the pure sand. Uh, to process 15 per second of the phosphate rocks. Uh, and then, of course, there's the 120 sin gas. This is basically free. I mean, this is, it's not a lot of sin gas. Uh, if you're doing the sin gas from coal gas from tar, it is not a lot of tar. It, yeah, the, this, I, I basically ignore uh, sin gas for the exception that it makes it more difficult to actually shove all of the solid components into the, uh, high pressure furnace because now you have to have an input and an output of gas uh, on here. And then we get into the wood. Uh, and then we get into the next step, which is destructive distillation columns, which are huge buildings uh, to process the phosphor rust acid. You need 225 steam. Each uh, boiler is going to give you 60 steam, regardless of whether or not you're using the oil burner or the regular boiler. Uh, they produce 60 units each, so this is going to be four four uh boilers worth of steam uh at least if i've if i've done my math if i have done my math that will be uh at least uh four boilers worth of steam it won't tell me in hell mod because that is a that is an unfortunate limitation of hell mod if you have the ingredient input uh on here it uh it only does one chain down the line and it does not go backwards uh for you and in order to go backwards uh, you have to have a new production block uh, on the production line that is linked uh, to this one and that will show you uh, what you need to get the steam separately uh, but anyway 18.75 wood for every 15 phosphate rocks in 
There are many ways of getting wood in Pi Alien Life. This is the biggest thing with Pi Alien Life. Of course, it all comes down for, to logs. So effectively, we have to look at, well, what is producing logs uh, for us? It's logs into wood. Uh, there are many recipes to make logs now, and they all have uh, a different amount of logs that they produce. The very highest output that is reasonable for us at this point in time would be to have the ash seedling tailing CO2 recipe. It's a lot of ash to have to produce on site in order to do this recipe. I would suggest if, well, when and if you have access to that recipe. This one here, the seven logs every 20, is going to probably be the default one you go into just because you don't have to do extra infrastructure to get that ash uh, to begin with. Um... Just noting that biomass can be made from tar as one of the easiest methods of getting into that stuff, but it is going to use a lot of tar. Uh, so make sure that you have the production of that or ha have a method of choice uh, for getting biomass. If you are going into ash uh, recipe, the ash, re the ash recipe there, this is a useful recipe. Uh, any of the tailings recipes are useful because that pure sand, as part of this, that pure sand production is going to give you a lot of extra tailings. Uh, so you can use the tailings to make your wood as long as you have all of, like, enough. As long as you get enough tailings and as long as you're looping the tree seedlings, because tree seedlings need wood seeds, which need wood. So you need to loop some of the wood back to keep this process flowing as well. Uh, and of course, CO2, biomass is the default there. Um, so it's up to you whether or not you want to go the extra mile and do the extra logistics to do the ash. It is very viable if you have access to the ash recipe. Uh, otherwise, stick to this one. With the tailings, CO2, and tree seeds, you should absolutely have access to this at the point in time where you are able to first process your phosphate rocks. Um, yeah, otherwise, there's not really a good consistent source of wastewater at this point in the game, um, and you don't really want to spend... You don't really want to spend any fertilizer ever, uh, especially on wood production, so don't... Don't even think about spending fertilizer on the wood. It's a bit too expensive to make fertilizer to use it on wood production. Like, save that for more difficult things uh, that you are making over time uh, a little bit later in the game. So, that's my discussion on the wood there. My suggestion is tailings-based wood of some description using the tailings from the production of the pure sand. Uh, from the previous step. That's the, like, best advice I can give uh, on getting the necessary amount of wood. This is also going to add a huge amount of infrastructure to this build on the production of the wood. So take this here as in the actual production with a bit of a quote-unquote grain of salt uh, because th it's really big builds on wood and pure sand and ash and sin gas and the steam and the saline water that we cannot forget about uh, that are all go into feeding this evil machine that is the uh, processing of phosphates into phosphoric acid. Now, this, this step with the DDC does produce both phosphoric and phosphine gas. You get half as much phosphine gas as you do phosphoric acid, but as I have mentioned uh, previously, earlier, uh, you will end up not having as much of a demand of phosphine. So you will be essentially overproducing your phosphine, generally speaking, throughout the entirety of the game, uh, because it's only used in two total things. The phosphine gas can be converted into additional phosphoric acid, the excess phosphine gas, if you put it through a... Uh, overflow valve by throwing it into mixers 
uh, and adding saline water to it. This will, of course, give you hydrogen chloride. It's up to you whether or not you want to actually use this hydrogen chloride for anything, because this is not going to be a consistent supply of this stuff. It is not going to be consistent. I would highly suggest not making it a consistent supply, because that would mean voiding phosphoric acid, and that is a very, 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 very bad idea. That is a very, 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 very bad idea. And I guess we haven't actually talked at all about what phosphoric acid is actually used for because we talked about what the rocks were used for, what the phosphorus acid was used for, and what the phosphor what the phosphine is used for. Let's have a look at what phosphoric acid is used for. That is not showing me the proper thing. I need dash. Do I need dash? That is not. This is This is not what I'm looking for. Phosphoric acid is called what now? As long as I just click on the thing. It is capital P. That's that's the thing. So phosphoric acid, etching solution, as I discussed as well. It is it is used in the etching solution. It is also used for graphene rolls as a huge demander of the phosphoric acid once you get into your circuit 3 stuff. Uh, that's graphene is part of circuit 3s. It gets used for several things beyond just circuit 3s, so keep that in mind. Lots of buildings use graphene rolls. Um, it's going to be a big, 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 big pull on phosphoric acid when you get to it, just like the etching solution is going to be a big, 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 big pull on your uh, phosphoric acid as well, because uh, this stuff is used in lots of stuff. Lots of stuff needs etching solution, including PCB2s, which which need both which is used in both the uh, neuroprocessors and the circuit twos. So keep that in mind. Don't even remotely think about doing this for cumene. Like, it's a trap. Don't do it. it don't, it's way too expensive to do this particular recipe for cumene. Hold off for the uh, chemical science recipe for, the, for doing cumene like that. Um, otherwise, we have the... Tufra, Mark II, and Mark III will use phosphoric acid to upgrade them. Uh, and of course, we need the aluminium pulp stage one that uses it. Otherwise, that is that. Uh, this stuff here is part of uh, other stuff. It is part of the uh, pesticides. That's, that's what it is. That's not actually using phosphoric acid. It's just similar names uh, showing up here. With that, after spending significantly longer than I originally anticipated, as is always going to be the case, uh, I would like to thank you all for watching. We have covered all of the intricacies uh, around uh, the phosphates, what they're used for, uh, as well as suggestions on how to obtain all the outside inputs uh, associated with it. Uh, if you've been enjoying this tutorial series thus far, please be sure to do all of the engagement and social stuff below the video. You can, of course, follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash otakushibo. You can support Pyanodon's mods development at patreon.com slash Pyanodon. And you can support me at patreon.com slash otakushibo. I will, of course, see you all on the next one. Mm -hmm.